Okay, so real quick. So Exodus 17. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to reference it, but here is what I, what the Lord was sharing with me in this. Is that obedience is key when walking in the will and the ways of the Lord. Verse 1 says that the people left in stages according to the commandment of the Lord. So as the people left their camp, they left out in the order that God had called them to leave out because there's an order to what God calls us to do. And so in addition to obedience, the people of God should have the right heart and attitude towards him. The people obeyed, right? The people left out of camp in the right order, but yet their heart was hardened to him because as they left out, they complained about the circumstances in which they were leaving and going into, right? They were complaining about being thirsty. They were like, oh, you know, Moses, you let us out here into this wilderness our livestock are thirsty we're thirsty and what are you trying to do to us right and complain about how they should have stayed in Egypt and so you know here they are out of bondage but yet they're complaining and wanting Please. to go back into bondage right? right and so the people obey yet they quarreled against the Lord they complained against him and they also fought um and so they also, um, oh, so, oh, they also forgot or no longer appreciated the miracles and provision of the Lord. When they were thirsty, they didn't pray and seek the Lord for water. Because get this, this is what got me. So this is about the third time I've read um, Exodus and each time I get something new. Like this is after. They had already complained about the food. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you manna and quail. Like manna in the morning, quail at night, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're going to get this. So this is in the middle of them getting a manna and quail. Now they're complaining about the and thirsty so it's just like you guys forgot that he already made the the, the better water um clean he already mm -hmm. provided water from rocks like you he has already done this he has already given you food but yet you haven't learned that you can trust him and go to him with your knees and then he will supply him right he didn't bring you out of mm -hmm. egypt to kill you he brought you out to give you something better right and so mm -hmm. And they didn't pray and seek the Lord for water. They complained of us at Moses. And they were ready to kill Moses. They allowed their perception of lack. And it was a perception of lack. Because mm -hmm. the reason why I say this, and in parentheses, the things that they didn't have, it was perception because the Almighty God was with them who had already mm -hmm. been supplying their needs. So really they didn't have lack. They just needed to go to the source. But they were so focused upon what their natural eye could see that they forgot that they served a good God who can supply all of their needs, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a word in there because we do the same thing. Like as single moms, sometimes we can be focused on what's not, what we don't have. Either the dad left, he's not doing whatever it is. There might be some financial challenges there. There might be some child care challenges there. There might be some challenges with you know who you used to be before you ended up in a situation and you're looking behind you instead of right. what's in front of you and who has been sustaining you this whole time and so Amen. one of the other things is that the things that they, they were so focused on what they didn't have and I forget what scripture that is that they said um who was it I think it was in uh, one of the Corinthians, I forget, where it says, "Focus our eyes not on focus our eyes on the unseen and not the seen, because mm -hmm. the seen is temporary, but the unseen is eternal." Right, and so, mm -hmm. so that perception of lack because they forgot who they served caused them to forget the Almighty God traveled with them, and He was literally with them in a the cloud and a fire. He traveled with them wherever mm -hmm. they went. And one of the things right. that I found amazing, as I looked at the picture of the Red Sea, the Lord was traveling in front of them with the Red Sea. But when the people of Egypt showed up and the Lord said, okay, I'm sending this wind to part the Red Sea, what did he do? He moved from in front of them to in between them and the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So that way, as they were waiting for the Red Sea to part, the Egyptians could not attack them because yep. they were stuck. He positioned himself between them and the adversary so that the adversary could not overtake them while they were waiting on their blessings from the Lord. And so I need you guys to understand this because the adversary cannot overtake you unless you give him permission to because God positions himself in between you and the adversary, right? He has a hedge of protection around you, a fortress around you that cannot move unless you decide to say, Lord, I don't believe you. I don't want to be like that, right? Because our hedge mm -hmm. of protection can be punctured with unbelief. And so it's that unbelief oh, yeah. that caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord. It was that unbelief mm -hmm. 
things mm -hmm. that caused them to complain against the Lord and it caused them to disobey the Lord. And that was the thing that caused them to not go into the promised land. The root, the root yeah. of rebellion was due to unbelief. But when yeah. we believe in the Lord, when we trust in the Lord, we have everything that we need. It might not be, you know, branches falling from the sky or anything, but we have right. all of our needs, right? And so the Almighty God traveled with them. Like, you know how a Bible, the God is described in the Bible. He goes before us. He goes behind us as our rear guard. Mm -hmm. He goes around us. He surrounds mm -hmm. us, right? right? And so God was, yes. And so God was traveling with them. And he didn't deny them of their needs. And so this complaining was literally in the middle of God's provision of manna and quail every day. But because of their ungrateful heart and complaining, they longed for the times of slavery because they began mm. to romanticize the time of bondage. Mm. And so I'm realizing that some people can be so used to bondage that they don't know how to be free and to live free. And that bondage of the past can be strong, unpleasant, yeah. yet comfortable at the same time because it is known that people can literally be free and still be in bondage because the people of of Israel, they were free, mm -hmm. but they were in bondage mm -hmm. in their minds. And because they were still in bondage of their minds, they could not see what was in front of them. And they could not right. see the beauty of the Lord and how the Lord provided for them, sustained them and kept them. And if they just sought the Lord in their right. time of need, that he would meet all of their needs. And so they were free, yet they did not know how to live free because they were so right. used to being told what to do, how to live, what they could have, what they couldn't have, and someone right. telling them what their limits were right. and who they right. were, right. that they could not step into the full abundance of who they are in their inheritance in the Lord. God gave them a promise of going to a place with the land of milk and honey, but they could not right. get past the little stuff that they had that they can count on in slavery. Right. And they could and not move honest, forward. Can we see ourselves in that? Can we see ourselves in that? Can we see ourselves in that? We have access. We have access. We have access. I think once I um, realized that the job was not my source, that God mm -hmm. was my source, that's when things turned around. That's when things turned around. That's when mm -hmm. I had to rely fully on him. And I mean, you know, you talk about unbelief. What about fear? Fear yep. is in the same camp. It's in, in the, the same, same camp. camp. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. the same root of unbelief? Right. It is. It mm -hmm. is. And one of my favorite scriptures, I, I shouldn't say favorite, you know, there are no favorites, but it's like mm -hmm. the um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all of your heart lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths that that's so much in there trust mm -hmm. in him with all of your heart think of them at that sea trusting in him the man that he has sent right moses for them mm -hmm. to 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 set them free and lean not on your own understanding they're looking at a great big old sea it's not going to make sense. The things that God tells you to do, it's not going to make sense. But we're not to lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him. Lord, I'm going to trust you through this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where you, what you're calling me to do, but I'm going to take mm -hmm. this first step. I'm going to take this first step of obedience. You talked about obedience. Right. Mm -hmm. And he will direct your paths. And didn't he direct their paths? He did. And crush he the did. enemy. He <laughs> did. And crush the enemy. They could not be touched. They could not be touched. Mm -mm. And I think that's what we forget, that we have access. We are his daughters. He loves us. He's not going to let anything mm -hmm. happen to us. He's going to, but he promised to provide for us. Mm -hmm. So there's that lack mindset that you talked about. Yes. Look at what we have. Look at what we have. What, what happens if we were to flip it? And stop looking at what we don't have and look at what we do have. Waiting patiently for the things that we say we don't have. We may not be ready for them. Right. There's a work that he has to do inside. He had to do a lot of work with the Israelites. <laughs> a lot of work. And they, st 
And God bless them. They still didn't get there all the way. <laughs> mm -mm. They still didn't get there, which is why they didn't possess the land. Flowing with milk right. and honey. And you know what I find interesting is I've just been in Exodus 16 and 17 the last couple of days. And uh -huh. one of the things that I find fascinating is um, I can't remember if it's before Exodus 16, but where the Lord says when he took the people out, he said he took them, maybe it might be at 14, but he took the people out not through the direct way. He took them through the wilderness the long way on purpose because he said, lest they face war and turn back around to go back to Egypt. And so he realized that the people of Israel weren't ready to take the promised yeah. land because oh they goodness. were not equipped and able or have the faith to be able to move through the opposition to be able to get there because there will be opposition because when we're reclaiming territory for the Lord, the enemy is not going to give up without a fight, but we have right. to be prepared. And one of the things that I thought was so fascinating mm -hmm. as I was reading it, he said, and he tested them. He tested them. So tested them yeah. like they were thirsty. They were hungry. He was like, that was a test. So they would be able to learn how to draw near to him, learn how to trust yeah. him, learn how to believe him, learn how to rely on them, on him. And so in that testing, he was building them up mm -hmm. almost like strength training, right? <laughs> like when we oh, strength yeah. train, like it's building That's us good. up to be ready to go through the process to, to get the promise. Because if we get right. the promise without going through the process, we can't hold on to it. No. And God isn't going to set us up to fail. Right. Because he, you know, we think that he's being mean, that we're being punished, mm -hmm. um, that it's payback. Look, <laughs> like my pastor says, if God wanted to pay us back, we would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we literally straight up. Whoosh, gone in a in a in a, a millimeter in in a second. <laughs> so what it is is love, and and you will reach mm -hmm. the point when when you are in the wilderness. Thank God for the wilderness. Nobody wants to be in mm -hmm. the who wants to be in the wilderness. Seriously, I mean, I mm -hmm. feel like that was me, and um, I would say twenty all of us in twenty twenty with this pandemic and twenty twenty one. Even um even even now, I'm I'm coming mm -hmm. out of that point. You will get this. <laughs> I want y'all to hang with us. Hang with us. You will get to the point when you realize that you weren't ready for the promise. And when mm. you really, truly trust God uh, in the process and keep praising him and thanking him for the process, you will thank him for the wilderness. Mm. Yes, you will thank him for the wilderness. And I found myself thanking him for the wilderness. Uh, just mm -hmm. the other day, all the things that I talked about that happened to me um, uh, during uh, that I shared during the summit with the anxiety and the, the panic attacks, I had to thank him for that. You know why? Because it made me stronger. Mm -hmm. It made me learn how to spiritually fight. That was a wilderness. I'm, I'm still going mm -hmm. through it a little bit as well. That is the wilderness. Like I said, I'm fighting my way out. <laughs> Um, but you will reach a point where you will thank God for the wilderness. And that is when you get it. That mm -hmm. is when you are close to being on your way to the land flowing with milk and honey. Right. Because they had to go through it. And one of the things that was, that was really getting to me, because either way, they had to go through the wilderness. But mm -hmm. was it going to be the short wilderness or was it going to be the long wilderness, right? Because once mm -hmm. they left Egypt, once they left bondage, remember when Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh, they said, let us go on a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifice to their gods. Mm -hmm. So either to, mm -hmm. to the almighty God, Yahweh. So... What happened was either way, they would have had to go through the wilderness. But yeah. had they just gone through the wilderness to um, the strong army, they would have been dismantled, destroyed, and they would not have gotten it, right? right. And, and not right. only that, but they would not have been able to defeat the armies that had already been occupying the land in Canaan, right? God right. fought for them, right? But God gave them victory, but they still had to show up. They still had to have the yeah. confidence to show up and think about the difference between when they were scouting the lamb with Moses and when they were scouting the lamb with Joshua. Only Joshua yeah. and Caleb said, get his giants, but we serve a good God, right? What giants? That's right. Giants can't stand against your God. Boldness. 
Right. But then, and then the people got so shook that all they can do yeah. is focus on the giants that they forgot to focus on the power of God. But the second right. generation, when they saw God's faithfulness through the wilderness, Right. And their parents' disobedience and unbelief. The second generation, right. I want to believe, are kind of like, wait a second. We've been in here for 40 years, but our shoes never got holes on them. Our clothes yep. never got holes. We have food. We, we have agree. water yep. each and every day. So guess what? We uh -huh. see this giant, but we see God, and we know that God is bigger than any giant. And I'm talking to somebody right now because you are looking at your mountains and your giants in yeah. your life, and you're using yeah. those mountains, and you're looking at those giant mountains and giants so much that you're placing limits on yourself and on God. When God is telling you, don't look at the mountains and giants in your life. Look to me because he is Focus bigger than any type of mountain and giant that you can ever, ever, ever come against, come up against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys are, are, are following, but, you know, God had to, that, as Aisha said, an entire generation. He let an entire generation uh, die because they were, look, they literally saw the promised land. So how many of you can see that thing that God promised you, but you got scared? You shrank back. You were like, oh, no. <laughs> Somebody else is there. Oh, no. But God, I'm raising my hand. Right. It's been me. <laughs> me too. Me too. I've done it before. Oh, yeah. And then it mm -hmm. just, it, it comes back around again because it's supposed to be you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for the Israelites, their unbelief, a whole generation mm -hmm. wiped out. He mm, wandering for 40 years. Can you imagine just a month in the wilderness is a long time? 40 <laughs> years? It's hot. hot. Green. <laughs> the desert. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I think we um it, it's the mindset shift. They like you said, they were never hungry. They want, they want it for nothing. They want it for nothing. But yet when he showed them what they could have, what was theirs, not could have, what mm -hmm. was theirs, they shrank back. They so, shrank back. so what are we shrinking back from? Mm -hmm. What are we shrinking back from that God said, this is yours, that I'm going to give you to the, give this to you. What are his promises mm -hmm. to us? What are you shrinking back from? What are you afraid of? Mm -hmm. It, what are you leaning on your own understanding mm -hmm. in? Mm. Wow, that that's that's, a, that's so much to unpack. So much to mm -hmm. unpack. So, so much. much. I literally have Exodus right here when you when you start talking about Exodus because this is we 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 have not uh, uh, really went all in to discuss. We're we're just letting the the Holy Spirit take over. And, and I will tell you that Exodus was literally in the devotionals uh, that I have been doing lately. Mm -hmm. So look at God. <laughs> you were look like, at God. I'm going to talk about Exodus. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> it's my goal, too, because so. one of the things about Exodus is it is so powerful because it shows God's power, first of all, it to, does. to make a way out of no way how he uses the least of these, right? Because Moses, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Moses wasn't even supposed to be alive. He wasn't wow. even supposed to be alive. And so God mm -hmm. spared Moses' life because if you look at, the Lord has been speaking to me about this just over the last couple of days. Herod, the enemy tried to kill Moses. The yeah. enemy tried to kill Jesus. And yeah. went through great lengths because Pharaoh ordered that all the male children be killed. Right. Herod ordered all the male children to be killed, mm -hmm. but God saved his people, right? And I remember um, on on the opening session where I was sharing my story about how the twins' dad tried to force me to have an abortion, and one of the mm -hmm. women commented and talked about that forced abortion because she went through the same thing, too, where the father of her child was trying to force her to have an abortion. And so it's kind of like the enemy knows who has a calling on their right. life. The enemy knows. Right. And so what the enemy will do is that if he can't kill you before you're born, 
which he could not kill Moses and Jesus before they were born. He'll mm -hmm. throw up obstacles in their lives and to try and prevent them from doing the work that they are called to do. So right. Moses ended up being in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. For all those years um, in Midian. And so, but but God met him in his wilderness season. See, I see um, Shar's comment about being in the wilderness. God met Moses in his wilderness season and said, regardless of what you've been through in the past, I can right. redeem it all and you still have purpose, right? Yeah. When Jesus, yeah. the enemy tempted Jesus in the wilderness, the enemy tried to get Jesus to turn from God. And sure so by is. promising him all this stuff, right, that God had already given him because of who he is. And so if the mm -hmm. enemy can't kill the people before they're born, he's going to try and throw up obstacles or attempt them in a way to get them to turn from God and turn to him. So we have to be on guard and we also have to be diligent to disciple our children in the way of the Lord. Right. Because all of our children are here because they have purpose and they have an they assignment. Have purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, 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 you riding down my street right now because, you know, <laughs> um, with, with <laughs> the, my company from drama to destiny, I help women mm -hmm. eliminate the drama and the distractions to get them on the road to their destiny. So what is that drama? <laughs> what is that drama? It could be a job, right? See, I, mm -hmm. I believe in everyone's potential. And, and, and the fact that they have a purpose. And so it really does bother me when I see women, um, when, when I see women, when I see that women don't know their worth, when I see them mm -hmm. don't know that they don't know their worth, when I see them caught up in um, relationships that they have, hello, I was there, uh, caught up in a job um uh that uh yeah it's paying the bills but it's not fulfilling but sometimes we you know we have to do what we have to do so mm -hmm. don't quit that job unless god tells you to so that's so interesting that you talk about purpose because it's like my absolute favorite thing to coach on purpose what is your purpose mm -hmm. what is your purpose ask god what your purpose is ask god what your purpose mm -hmm. is as a single, there's a purpose as a single. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose, you know, in being a mom, a purpose in being a daughter, everything. Mm -hmm. What is your purpose right now? I, I challenge you, ladies, to ask God, what is my purpose? Because, yes, that was Moses' purpose. I'm so glad you brought that up. And Moses was like, oh, no. <laughs> Moses stuttered, right? Moses, yeah, Moses was like, not me. <laughs> I can't speak well. But look at what God did through him. My God, what are you disqualifying yourself from? What are you disqualifying yourself from? Because you're looking at it as you're looking at doing it in your own strength and not doing it in God's strength. What are you disqualifying yourself from? And that's why we have to be all in. That's why we have to be all in. And that's why we have to lean on him, trust in him with all of our hearts, lean not on our own understanding in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. It's that simple and it's that hard. <laughs> I know, right? Because you know what? And I think that because it gets back to like we we want to walk like in control that little oh you're breaking up i can't hear you i said um sometimes we want to walk in the known because the known is comfortable and we feel like we can control yes. um the known or we're used to it like you know i remember yes. when i um when i was dealing with workplace bullying it's like I hated the workplace bullying. I hated the way they were treating me. Yeah. It was absolutely miserable. Right. It was unfair. Yet at the same time, I was afraid to leave that job because I didn't know mm. what the new job would bring. 
And when I became a full-time entrepreneur, I didn't know what the new thing of being a full entrepreneur would bring because I I left my corporate job and went to a temp job. Um, It was a temporary job. I was an outside consultant. And interestingly, okay. made even more money and had more responsibilities as an outside consultant. And mm-hmm. then once I left there, became a full-time entrepreneur. But I was scared. I knew that what I was going through was horrible. But I didn't know yeah. what the next step would bring. So in a way, as horrible as the workplace bullying was, that horribleness, that's not a word, was known, Right. And so sometimes that fear of the yeah. unknown can keep us stuck because we've learned how to manage the pain of where we are, where right. we are. And sometimes I think oh, that yeah. we don't know how to live in the freedom or live pain free because we're so used to the pain and we've gotten so right. conditioned to manage that pain and the expectations right. and of that pain that we are in. Right. And I, I think that's how we end up in, in cycles, cycles of like toxic relationships. We leave this relationship um, because it was bad, but then we end up in something just like it or worse because mm-hmm. <laughs> the the shift, the mindset shift hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. The renewal, the renewing of my mind, right? The mm-hmm. Bible talks about that renewing of your mind that hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened right. yet. The healing hasn't happened yet. Um, it's so interesting that you talk about um, the workplace bullying. Um, wow, it, it wasn't called bullying back then, but I, I had some issues, uh, you know, back in the day on uh, in my old job. And, you know, God will protect you on your job. And, you know, it's just a consequence for those who try to come for you. Um, it's a consequence of, of um, they will they will, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? They will, they will go in the ditch (laughs) Mm -hmm. as a consequence of messing with the child of God, because I, I too was dealing with a a difficult, a difficult boss, uh, at the time and would do things and would, uh, would, you know, just try to pick on me. That's what it was picking on Mm -hmm. me. And, you know, I just stayed in prayer didn't do anything. I remember one time I was like, I just have to like stare this person down. I st- it was like, that was the only thing I did. Seriously. I like stared them <laughs> down for like <laughs> five seconds. Um, but I like you that that is, that is the only thing that I did. It was probably wrong. Um, but what he was doing, it was trying to but, you know, I felt like block me from certain situations, not give me proper opportunities. And I will tell you, there was a shaking in that, uh, mm. at that job. And I wasn't there, but I got a call from a coworker and said that the person was gone. And I was like, what? what? Say what? And they said their name and said that they were gone. And I remember after a meeting prior, I thought that this, that the person's injustice was uh, going to be made known, you know, the person's injustice towards me mm-hmm. and overall, <laughs> and it wasn't. I remember um, the higher ups laughing at, laughing at the jokes my boss was giving. I was like, okay, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. They're laughing at... Um, they're laughing at the jokes. And I went to my office and I cried. I cried. And another coworker said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Whatever happens to this person, you're going to feel sorry for them. And I said wow. in my flesh, I don't know what. Um, <laughs> what would make me feel sorry for them? And I said that. And then fast forward. I was out of work and that person was gone. That person was gone, gone, not of their own doing, gone. And after that, I got a promotion. Look at God. So like, (laughs) I guess that would be like a David and Goliath kind of thing or, Mm -hmm. you know, God will protect you. God will protect you. I was still there. They were trying to make life hard for me. 
but who came out with the victory? And look at you, you said you left. Greater pay, greater everything. Mm -hmm. Responsibilities. And after my enemy left, mm -hmm. I got promoted and they were gone. So God, mm -hmm. God will, when you stay, and this is for somebody who, who, who wants to quit, maybe he's not calling you to quit. Maybe he's calling you to just stay there and just be all in mm -hmm. and pray. You, you have to, wh what is it that he wants to do? He wants you to do. That's for somebody. Cause I don't know how we got on that. <laughs> That's for somebody. Somebody telling you, girl, I would quit. I mess with them people. You know, I had a family member ask me. Not without an exit strategy. Your job? Mm -mm. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. So sometimes we're called to leave and sometimes we're called to stay. And God Absolutely. would deliver me later, Absolutely. much later, much later. Mm -hmm. So that's for somebody. Absolutely. Not Absolutely. Like what we have like been talking said. about in obedience, in the timing in obedience. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes yeah, you can I, get ahead I, of I'd actually. That. I, I had tried to leave before and he shut it down. Right. <laughs> He's like, no, it's that time. I tried to leave before. <laughs> shut that all the way down. But you you want to be, as uh, uh, as I heard my, my pastor say, in the downtown will of God. You want to be in the will of God. There's no safer place <laughs> to be but in the will of God. In the will of God, doing what He tells you to do. Um, I mean, there is nothing more glorious. Um, what is the scripture? Um, uh, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has uh, enough worry today. Itself. Which, yeah, right. Where yeah. it's basically like concentrate on today, right? I want to look it up. Um, I think it's Matthew six thirty three. I think. Okay, let me look that up because I, I have to say that the right way. Matthew, hold on, do not worry. I'm gonna look this up real quick because I want to say, you know, we can't be misquoting. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> yep, there we go. Matthew 6.34. So do not worry about tomorrow. Here we go. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Mm -hmm. This was the scripture that got me through 2020. And I think wow. you and I talked about how 2020 was, we were fine. We were good in 2020 when the world was falling apart. I mean, emotionally, that's questionable, but <laughs> I think we all were like, what in the world's going on? But, you know, financially, the, the, we had clients and everything. And I literally, this is, this is, guys, I hope, you know, you are really getting this in terms of the word of God, truth. Mm -hmm. This is what you have to hold on each and every day. This is, this should be the air that you breathe. <laughs> God mm -hmm. is the air that you breathe. There's a, there's a song. <laughs> uh, Chris Tomlin the air that I breathe. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Once you really get that in your spirit, do not worry about tomorrow. Because I was worried about, oh, you know, the, the mortgage or the bills, you know, they need to be paid. And that was like, mm -hmm. that was like next month. Why am I worrying about next month? <laughs> My God, who is so big, can bring it to me later today or in that moment. Why am I worrying about next month? Concentrate on today. There is so mm -hmm. much. There's a whole 30 days. And then it got <laughs> till that next month. And then it got to the point where, you know, I would, I would kind of, you know, he, he would drop in my spirit. So th this, this scripture again, and there will be a week when I would need, right? And so it's like, you have to really condition your mind. What are you worried about next week for? That's like, what do not worry about tomorrow. There's a whole seven days that God mm -hmm. can perform a miracle. And then you get stronger 
And if you need something by midnight that night, we talked about that, right? Why are you worried about it? <laughs> Even today, right? Concentrate on today. God can do it mm -hmm. today. Don't worry about tomorrow. God can do it today. So there, you, you talked about strength training. There is strength mm -hmm. training. It, th that's what the word is, strength training. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's not even promised. <laughs> right. But today, each day has enough trouble of its own. So that, that, that scripture got me through 2020. And that's when I really, now when I, when I left my job, that's when I learned that God, that God was my source and not that job. And then when 2020 <laughs> happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a whole other word right there. Oh, yeah. You'll learn that real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, who, who is this? Really it's quick. It's not me. It's not my boy. Right. I think, and, and going back to the, you know, the the Israelites and 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 even the scripture and 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 God being our source, that is uh why I um stress the importance of not only having a relationship with him but talking to him every single day really spending quiet time with him um to see what it is that he has has to say to you you know in my quiet time I'll get instructions from him and and that's when I'm writing it down and this is apart from your prayer and apart from uh doing your devotionals and this is the quiet time that um, that you spend with him to find out what is it, Lord, what are your priorities for me today? And actually sit and listen and write it down. He has so much to say to us. This, I am no different from you, <laughs> ladies. I have not always done this. I have not always done this. I've always heard about, you know, God wants to speak to you. God wants to meet you in the morning. He has something to say. I'm a living witness, and I'm sure you are too. He mm -hmm. speaks to us throughout the entire day. And there in should be a too. time where you set a, in different ways. Yeah, in different ways. He could send a stranger. He could send, he could speak through a prophetess. Um, a prophet, he could speak through his word, a, a preacher, a song. You want to make sure that you're spending that time to hear from him. I've gotten so much, so much in the secret place. Absolutely. So much. And one of the things that I learned too mm -hmm. is, because um, I'm learning more, like sometimes like when I'm praying or um, if I'm reading a word or just sitting in silence, sometimes I start hearing song lyrics. And so it doesn't happen, you know, periodically it'll happen. And I've learned instead of just being like, okay, let me turn this off and like focus, I actually started to write down the lyrics so then I can go back and find the song. And then I'll listen to the song where I'm just like there, just by myself, just listening to the song, not to sing it, not to recognize the the uh, melody, but to be able to hear the yeah. lyrics of the song. Because sometimes when I've done that, this just happened about. recently, I actually got instruction about what the Lord was trying to tell me by listening to the lyrics that I was hearing in my head. And I learned to pay attention to that because I thought that, you know, if I just sit in silence, then I'm going to get it. But then sometimes it's like through the song lyrics, sometimes it's because I'm, I'll be driving and then I start to, or I'm like out and about and I notice repetition. Like I'll look at the signs or different things around me and I see the same phrase over and over and over again. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to pay attention to that. And then sometimes I understand yeah. what the Lord is trying to say in that moment. And sometimes I have to take it back to him in prayer and say, I keep, I keep seeing this repetitive phrase going on right now. What is it yeah. that you're trying to, to communicate with me through this repetitive Phrase. Right. So, or I might pick up the phone and call somebody. I'll hear the Lord say, pick up the phone and call this person. And then just the direction of the conversation, mm -hmm. I end up hearing that. And, mm -hmm. and I know in my spirit that there's instruction 
there and there's something that the lord is trying to communicate with me through that person and for me being like kind of like a yep. type a like type person sometimes it can be hard to slow down <laughs> because i have a list of to do like this big and sometimes i'm like i don't yes i don't know if i can sit and call this person but i've learned to right. when the lord put somebody on my heart to at least pick up the phone and call that day because sometimes there's a message or a word of encouragement or sometimes i'm sent to deliver yep. a message or word of encouragement to that person and so yeah when we look at exodus one of the biggest themes is full and complete obedience on time obedience and so we're able yep. to hear from the lord get what we need from the lord or deliver what right. somebody else needs when we operate in that full and complete obedience to the will of the lord yeah and we have to do it exactly the way <laughs> he um he wants us to do it and mm -hmm. when because the, mm -hmm. what did we learn during the summit? Delayed obedience. <laughs> what was it? It was something obedience. that had us, uh, that smacked us all. Perfectionism yeah, is, is, uh, is just like, it's disobedience. Perfectionism is disobedience. That's it. That's it. And that mm -hmm. just slapped us all. And then delayed obedience is disobedience. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. That just, I, I have to go back and look at some of the things that you know, he's speaking to me about it, it has spoken to me about in, in my, uh, in my mm -hmm. secret place in my quiet times and act on those things. So this is really, yes. this is for me too, because don't think that Absolutely. just because we're talking that we are walking this thing out, uh, to perfection because no, um, I too, I have to go back and I want to make sure I'm walking in obedience as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, immediate obedience that's it immediate obedience because you know when people when people need help he's he's gonna send his angels he's sending his people out to people so i mean if if you don't answer the call he will raise someone else to answer the call but what happens to you what happens to you because you did not be obedient to what it is that he called you to do we don't want to find out <laughs> We don't want to find out. There was something you else know. that you said. Oh man. Oh man. It's it's gonna come back to me. It's gonna come back to me. It's you know, there's there's you what talking about. Go ahead. Go Let ahead. me know when you remember. Let me know when you remember. Um, okay. There's one thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned. There's two different oh, things. There's Thank two you. different wills of the Lord. There's the perfect will of the Lord and the permissive will of the Lord. So we want to make sure that we remain in the perfect will of the Lord. And this is something that the Lord had been working with me on over this year. And I remember there was an mm -hmm. instance actually fairly recently where um, there was an opportunity that was presented to me. And I had been mm -hmm. praying um, about, about something, right? And then an opportunity presented itself. And I thought that that was the answer to the prayers that I had been praying. And so I was like, praise God, thank you, God, thank you, God, for this blessing. Thank you for my prayer. You answered my prayer. <laughs> but then there were some like obstacles that started to um that started to come up. And like there were some delays. And so I'm praying, I'm like, Lord, I bind up the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. Loose up my blessing now in the name of the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like I'm praying. And I heard the Lord say, this isn't your opportunity. And I'm like, Ooh. but this came, I'm praying, I'm fasting. Right after the and prayer. And this opportunity right? mm -hmm. came. So how is this not my opportunity? And yeah. the Lord told me, yeah. he said, um, he said, this opportunity is my permissive will, not my perfect will. And I said, well, Lord, close the door. Mm. If it's not your will, like, mm. why is the door open? This means it, this got to be my, this got to be my opportunity, right? This is, it, it showed up. Think. Yeah. It's an answer. And then I'm like, well, Lord, if it's not my opportunity, close the door. And he told me I shouldn't have to close the door when I told you it wasn't your right opportunity. He said, Ooh. let's be clear. If you walk through this door, 
I'm leaving it open because I want you to not need me to close a door that I've told you not to walk through. Ooh. And he said, wow. you can walk through it, but know that this, you'll be blessed. But this will be your per, uh, my permissive will and not my perfect will because I have something more for you. And, and oh, this is wow. this, I just realized this. Do you know if I had walked through that door, the summit would not have happened? Uh oh. Because he told me, he told me, he said, if you walk through this door, the amount of time that this opportunity is going to take. I've already told you to do the summit and I've told you the date. He said the amount of time that you would spend on this opportunity, by the time you're done with it, you will say it wasn't worth it. The money that they, I might have made was not worth it. And not only wow. would it have not been worth it, he said the amount of time that it would take, you would have to delay the summit by six months. You would not be able to do it in my perfect time. And so I was wow. looking at... Um, I was looking at everything and I was just like, I want to say yes. This is a great opportunity. Keep in mind, it's a great opportunity. And I had to right. say, but it's not my opportunity. And so what I did yeah. was I referred the opportunity to someone else. So I can Look walk in that. the perfect will of God. And not only mm -hmm. was I able to bless someone else, I was able to do the summit, which I would not have been able to do. The Lord was very clear. I would have had to push it back six months. It would have got done Yeah, six yeah. months from now. Yeah. And, um, but it and I'm looking been, at the impact. You know. It wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Like the impact, it, it, that it, the breakthrough right. would not have happened if right. I said yes to something that was not for me. Because I was thinking right. in my natural, we talked about seeing what your natural eyes and with your spiritual eyes and the unseen versus the seen i was looking at right. what i needed in that time i was just like well my kids tuition is due like you know just thinking about different mm -hmm. things like okay i have to That's be able to pay this i have to be able to pay that and this will be able to yeah. be able to answer all of these prayers that i've had but it right. taught me and then keep in mind not only was i able to do the summit literally two days later something else popped up and it was in perfect alignment. And God said, this is your opportunity. See? But I wouldn't have been able wow. to do the perfectly alignment one no. or the summit because the other one would have taken so much of my time. Right. Right. Wow. And I feel like something else would have popped up after that opportunity, too. I mean, who knows if the mm -hmm. summit would have even happened, though? You said delayed by right. six months. Would you really have felt like it? Interviewing the amount of the women that you interview probably not <laughs> you know it would have been something else right oh my god yeah it would have been something else would have popped up and oh gosh and it was it was supposed to happen exactly when it happened god's perfect mm -hmm. will i think that's an excellent um excellent point excellent point and i've never heard it put that way so yeah you gonna have me in my research but yes <laughs> perfect the perfect will of God downtown perfect will um mm -hmm. and yeah I, I I too can attest to um when when you were talking about when we were talking about God speaking uh to us uh through different people mm -hmm. and things of that nature and I I think about me and this, this book that I've been working on for 50 years you know <laughs> which will be out I mean, there you soon. guys have a book you're gonna finish it <laughs> this year in the name of Jesus. I remember one time I was, and this is what I remember. Uh, so thank you, Holy Spirit, for dropping that in my spirit again. God can speak to you through TV. Yeah, you mess around and do what you're not supposed to be doing. I was watching a <laughs> Lifetime movie, and you know that was a good. I was watching mm -hmm. a Lifetime movie. And a Hallmark and, uh, it. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sisters, um, and you know, I was supposed to be working on that book. You know, I was supposed to be working on that book instead of turning on the TV. And there was this, and it was a good one too. And there was this woman, she was in the driveway with her husband and their daughter was like a teenager or something. She might've been like 16 or something or 17. And so the daughter was going out on a date. And so they see this guy pull up in this car and she gets in the car 
And then the mom says to the dad, I thought we weren't going to um, let her date until she was 18. I thought we agreed no dates until 18. And then the dad said, I'm more worried about college tuition. How's that book coming along, by the way? <laughs> Can I tell you that my daughter was like a senior um, in, in high school at the time? <laughs> He said, I'm more worried about college tuition. How's that book coming along, by the way? I said, oh, I, I had to turn it off. I think I taped it, though. But I turned it, <laughs> I turned it off and started working on a book. God will slap you. <laughs> he will slap you. Don't think that God is not trendy. The guy won't show up on the Lifetime channel. He's in cable. He's in all of it. He will, he will interrupt your good time to do, to make you do what it is that he has called you to do. So that was for somebody. Talk to me through a Lifetime program. Uh, yeah. That's hilarious. Really afraid. <laughs> So, You're probably... so yes, do what <laughs> is. Walk in obedience, please. What's that? That's what your pet like. Walk in obedience. Yeah. <laughs> what? What did he just say? Wow. So walk but in you, obedience. And you know what? Your blessing is the and blessing it's just is in the obedience. It is. And you know, sometimes I think that a barrier to walking in obedience are the limitations that we place on ourselves. Because sometimes I think that we get shocked that God will call us to certain to a certain level of um, of influence or um, yeah. to to almost take the mantle that we have. I think yes. that sometimes we yes. feel unqualified and capable. We're looking at our own natural strength, like Moses. Like each time I read the story of Moses, like it's just so real. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's us. Like, literally, it's us. Good. Moses was looking at his own it is abilities. It, uh -huh. He's just like, you know, he's focused on the fact that he stutters. He fo he's focusing on the fact that he right. was on a run in Egypt or people still trying to kill him. Like, he he's thinking right. about how, you know, when he tried to step in and break up a fight between to Hebrew people who he looked at as brothers and they're looking at him as a traitor, as Pharaoh's like yeah. grandchild. Like they're like, who are you? Right. And so it's just right. like the amount of rejection that he felt, um, you know, he was displaced. Like, you know, he grew That's up good. partially with his family, but then he ended up living in Pharaoh's house. So like all like mm -hmm. the weight of his past is on him. The weight of his decisions is on him. The fact that he's, found a new life that he's you know he's happy he's thriving right like as a shepherd or as a mm -hmm. shepherd right he's there and so now he has to go back to that place of pain that place of rejection all yeah. while focusing on his limitations yeah. and his own speech and he's focusing on his own abilities he's looking at the status of pharaoh because during that time, Egypt was mm -hmm. at the top of their game. And so Egypt was the standard oh, yeah. of worldly culture. And he's like literally oh, in yeah. earthly terms, Powerhouse. Pharaoh was the most powerful man in the world, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah. but God calls Moses, the shepherd, to go and stand before the most powerful man in the world. And all he has is the promise that God is going to be with him. And so it's a task that yeah. he cannot do in his own strength. And so sometimes I think we think about our limits and our li like our own abilities yeah. and our own capabilities. And so when we're called to right. purpose, when we're called to do something great, when we're called to start a business, when we're called to start a ministry, when we're called to do yeah. something amazing in our communities, we're looking at our past. Mm -hmm. We're looking at who we used to be. We're looking at our own qualifications. And one of the things that as I was reading um, the book, um, the mm -hmm. book of Exodus again, like once Moses stopped mm -hmm. with all his excuses, like, well, but who are you? Who am I going to say I called you? But what about me? And God kept saying, I am, yeah. I am, I am. But finally, I, I, I appreciate this so much. I feel like it was the realest moment in the, inter in the exchange between Moses and God, where Moses was like, just oh. choose somebody else. It was like, I can't just choose somebody else. <laughs> And I like read it wow. like 
wow. Like that. And God was just like, it's too I keep seeing this, like, I'm going to be with you. Probably, God was like, that's your brother Aaron. He, mm -hmm. he was like, just, just take Aaron with mm -hmm. you. Like, I'm going to be with you. Aaron's going to be with you. You're not getting out of it. Go in the strength of me. Right. And I think that we do that, too, because we're so focusing right. or we're so focused on the things of us that we take our eyes right. off the things of God. And he's not calling us right. to do these things in and of ourselves. He's calling us to do it right. through the I am who is him who is able. And we see that staff, that shepherd staff that Moses mm -hmm. used with the, with the sheep mm -hmm. and everything. That shepherd right. staff, that ordinary staff, right? Which, by the way, don't miss this. Being a shepherd was one of the things mm -hmm. that helped qualify Moses because he went from shepherding Come sheep on, to preacher. shepherding people, right? And yep. so that thing yep. that he thought disqualified David. him from standing before Pharaoh was the very thing that qualified him, not just to stand before Pharaoh, but to lead the millions of people outside of Egypt. Yeah. But get this, yep. when the staff was originally Moses' shepherd staff, when God commissioned him and right. gave his pur him purpose and sent him along his way, he called it the staff of God. It was the staff of God. Mm -hmm. And so God the alone. ordinary yeah. and blessed it and called it extraordinary with Moses and had uh -oh, breaking God. So somebody needs to see this because you're resisting purpose. You're fighting against the very thing that God has told you to do. You're fighting yourself instead of as a power of God that is within you. Then you need to shift your eyes uh -oh. upward to the things that are unseen. Right. I, I missed a little bit of what you said, maybe about 30 seconds um, towards the end, you were breaking up, but absolutely. Look, okay, so this is what dropped him. What, what's in your hands? Mm -hmm. What's in your hands? Mm -hmm. What is in your hands? That's the blessing. That's the power. That's what God is going to use. What is in your hands? We often think you talking about the big thing that, you know, God's going to do through us. We often mm -hmm. think when when he gives it to us, right? Yeah. Like you said, mm -hmm. unqualified. What? Uh, no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> but he's given mm -hmm. it to us. Trust him in it. He would. This is God. Mm -hmm. The great I am. I am who you say I am. Mm -hmm. The great I am. He chooses us. He has chosen you to do this. That should be all that matters. Mm -hmm. His word should be all that matters. But I thank God for his patience. <laughs> be that is why it's so important, <laughs> right? <laughs> for us to see ourselves the way right. For us to see ourselves the way that God sees us. God already saw, mo you know, n the parting of the Red Sea and all of that stuff hadn't even happened yet. Mm -hmm. But God already knew that he could do it. God sees the end. We don't see the end. We see all the stumbling blocks and the <laughs> what's in the way. And, and, and like you said, what we are now, we see our past. No. Mm -hmm. None of that matters when God calls you. Answer that call. And he will be patient. He will be patient. Thank you, Father, for being so patient. He will be patient with us. Because he's like, okay, this is my child. I already know what I have to do. <laughs> I already know what I have to do. I know Sometimes he'll be gangster with us. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And those are the ones that the, the hard-headed. Hey, we're all hard-headed. You Sometimes you need to be in a headlock. He needs to take us gangsters down, put us in a headlock, jack us up. Didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. So he sees the end. He already knows that you can do it. He already knows. With We cannot lose with this power on the inside of us. So Moses had the staff. What's in your hand? Mm -hmm. What's in your hand? What's in your house? Mm -hmm. 
you had a session, start where you are. The, the vision, start with what you have. I think that was the name of the session. It was really good. Yes, with Jamie Allen. And um, yes, she was such a delight. And um, what did she say? She had a, she had a, um, a, a ring, ring light. light and she had the provision to get some speakers and it was something else. I mean, that, that blessed me. And that's why I, I knew it was going to bless me is why I wanted to go to her session. What is in your hands? Mm -hmm. What did he give you provision for already? Start with where you are. The vision is big. I know, but trust him with the vision. What he told Moses, that was huge. We can run, but we can't hide. Absolutely. Trust him. I remember when he um, told me that I was next for the single parents ministry. I had already, I told you what I did, drama to dress destiny, helping women eliminate the drama and the distractions to get them on the road <laughs> to their destiny. So, and I was building that business. So when he came, when I found out that the director was leaving and he talked about something, you're next? What you mean? <laughs> I'm next. <laughs> I'm trying to build over here. But but who had been um praying the prayer uh the the prayer of Jabez? Oh that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Mm -hmm. Right? So be careful what you pray for as well. <laughs> Cuz you just might get it. Funny story. And I Funny didn't story. think that I could handle it. Yeah. Yeah, I prayed that prayer and I prayed that prayer and uh, next thing you know, I was pregnant with twins. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> but he did. He enlarged my territory, my territory with the kids Double. and then ended up Double. giving me a single ministry, single mom's ministry. So like he did. It was in a very and unexpected way, but he definitely enlarged the territory in only a way that God will be able to see and put all the pieces together. Yeah. Only, let me tell you, I was blessed when I, um, when I, when I finally did walk in it because, you know, there was a young lady that was second in command when the director left. And I thought she wanted it. So I was like, Moses, you know, ain't, ain't me. I, I want to, you know, it's probably, it's her. She already been doing it. She's second in command. She's been helping out. And then I had a heart to heart with her one day. And her heart, her heart was somewhere else. Wow. Her purpose was somewhere else. Her purpose was to stand in place till the next leader came along. I said, dang God, it really is me. Like God lied. <laughs> Of course it was me. He said, you're next. <laughs> so I really was, when I started walking in obedience, I was blessed. My family was blessed. Mm -hmm. I had said, this is when I was working a nine to five. Um, and my hours were actually 11 to seven. So this is for somebody who thinks that, um, you know, first of all, God's, God's kingdom comes first. Yeah, I had this business. And yeah, it was to uh, help God's people, but you know, this is the church. <laughs> and there were people very influential in my life um, that told me not to do it, <laughs> not to do it, that some would consider wise counsel, but I knew that that was not wise counsel. And I knew that I was supposed to do it. And there was someone that said, are you sure? Did you hear right? And I just chuckled. Yes, I heard right. I'm sure it's supposed to be me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what would have happened to me? That's why you can't always look at man. You have to, you have to focus on God and know what God told you to do. Because I was looking at my external, like Moses was doing. I was looking at the fact that I had a job. I was already growing a business. My child, my daughter was a senior in high school. So what did that mean? We had to start focusing on college. We had to, um, actually, she wasn't in, high, in um, a senior yet, but she was still in high school and we still had to focus on a lot of things. And um, so scholarships and what school is she going to go to and all of those things. And I just started walking in obedience and I will, it was just a blessing all around. The single parents ministry was blessed. We just celebrated 25 years Um she went to college on a, a, a partial scholarship. He, he made a way. 
my business was blessed. I told you in 2020, you know, we, we won it for nothing in a pandemic. And, the, and that's when this happened and um, that I officially became the director. I was lead before that for a few years and then officially director um, with the title in 2020. So God was definitely doing a new thing. I was looking at what was in front of me. I had a, <laughs> I was a single mom. I was, um, I had this job and how am I going to be able to get off in time to go to these, you know, meetings and to lead this team and, God just worked it out. I went to my boss. He made it possible for me to leave early. I said, what? This is what, when, when God tells you, you just, you just have to walk it out in faith. My boss said, yes, yes, no problem. Yes, you can leave early on Thursdays. And that allowed me to, to walk into um, leading the single parents ministry and doing everything that it called me to do. So wow wow yes don't look at the external don't think it's too much it may be you may feel like it's too much but not with god if he called you to it he's gonna help you through it right and you know as you were you saying the plan that. the vision the steps go ahead you know what it reminded me of what happened when the people of, uh, of israel left egypt they left with the wealth of mm -hmm. Egypt in their hands. And so because they left with the wealth of Egypt in their yeah. hands, it's like they had everything that they needed for the wilderness. You know, the only thing they didn't have was food, but God provided the food. And get this, it's just they were able to build a tabernacle with the wealth that the mm -hmm. Egyptians gave them. So not only did they get free, they also left with wealth like god gave them everything that they needed just like when you he hooked him up <laughs> he hooked him up just like he hooked you up right and so it's just when we're walking in that alignment we don't have to worry about the lack because he did yeah. not call us yeah. to something that he didn't provide the provision for us for it might look differently than we Already. thought it might come a little slower yeah. than we think but it's always there. Yeah. It's always there. And in that always process, there. he's refining us to stop looking to the external, to stop looking to self, but to look to him. Because what there's a famous yeah. phrase that says, he doesn't equip the called. Wait, he doesn't, he doesn't call the equipped, oh, yeah. but he no, equips the called. Know. Right? I think I got that yeah. right. He equips the yeah. called. Yeah. And so we like we just know right. that if he's calling us, which he is, because you there's a reason why you join the summit. There's a reason why you join the live, because you know that God has a calling right. on you. And so we don't look to ourselves. We're looking to the one who called us right. because he's equipping you for the work that he's called you to do. That's right. Uh, the Bible says that he knew you before he knew us, before we, form, we were formed in our mother's wombs. How awesome is that? If we just stick a pin right there for a second. He knew us already. He already knew, he knew we were going to be on this, on this live right here. So, he, so, when, so when he drops something to you, when he gives you something in your quiet time or when you're just walking mm -hmm. down the street or through scripture or whatever, believe that you can do it and it's okay to be honest with God Moses was real honest with him I was honest with him you've been honest with him okay God so what what you should be asking how do you want me to walk this out because we can ask for the steps mm -hmm. sometimes he'll give us the steps but sometimes he just wants us to take the first step before he gives us the next and what I'm learning about God is that the end might scare us. He can't show us everything. He can't show us everything because we won't, because we're thinking about our limitations. We're thinking about our past. We're thinking about, you know, that, that mind shift hasn't happened yet. And so he can't show us everything because we would shrink back. Mm -hmm. He can't show us everything. He, he couldn't show me that I would go through this wilderness of um, of um, the, the mental health incident. Mm -hmm. he, he couldn't show you that you would have, that you would be, that you would be abandoned mm -hmm. when you were pregnant. He couldn't show you that. There were some things that we would have like not done. <laughs> you 
you know, mm -hmm. had we known the pain that was ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So that pain just makes us stronger. And that, that's, in your, that's in your title. So know that you have been one cold. Mm -hmm. Second, that you have been qualified. First, know that you are loved. Yes, that you absolutely. are loved. And because you are loved, you are cold. And that you are qualified. You are worth it. Because what we go through, we've talked about all the things that we've gone through. We've been very transparent mm -hmm. over this summit. And it's not for us. It's for everybody else. It for, it's for somebody else. For somebody else. Absolutely. What you have been through is for somebody else. So you have to step up with the vision that God has called you to do. You have to. People's lives depend on it. Look at, look at, look at our sister Aisha. People's lives depend on the summit. If you were to get, a, I mean, just go through those Facebook posts and see how many people shared uh, the Facebook posts of her summit mm -hmm. and just see, look at the comments and see how people have been blessed. This is, they've been saying things that this is just what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for these tools and, and, and words from God, right, that, that have come to you. And just how much of a blessing, and and I'm sure you were Moses when 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 it came down to <laughs> when oh, yeah. he dropped. We talked about it. He wanted to do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at this. Here we are on a live. This is like an afterglow of the big thing. <laughs> Had he showed you the end, and we're not even at the end. We don't even we. I mean. <laughs> You are being blessed right now because of your obedience. Mm -hmm. But like, what else is this turning into? This was probably just the, if I know God like I know him, <laughs> the springboard <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. The springboard to get you to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. We often want the springboard, right? We want the quantum leap. I did an event on that last year. We want that quantum leap. But what are the steps that we have to do to get that quantum leap? We got to walk in our obedience. Yes. And, and, and this summit is the perfect example of that. So yeah, keep, keep those testimonies coming because <laughs> this is how God works. You walked in obedience, you were blessed, this summit is the springboard for the next thing. And I can't wait to see. I mean, it might have already happened. But you can't unveil it yet. <laughs> you know what? I actually, so it's so, so funny. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? What? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, and it's funny that yeah. you said this because the springboard that the Lord revealed to me what was next was the retreat right? The retreat, September the 15th through the 17th. And guess who is going to be a speaker at the retreat? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, um, definitely. Oh my goodness. This is too much. Too much. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It is. It. This is, uh, ladies, uh, uh, ooh, yeah, this is that when the the story that I shared about going through what I went through, uh, the spirit of oppression trying to overtake me, trying to overtake my thoughts, my body, my health, my mind, and everything with the panic attacks, the anxiety, mm -hmm. the depression. Um, for the complete story, get your all access pass mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can hear the complete story. Um. Once I found out that it was the spirit of oppression and how I could fight, I did my research mm -hmm. on how I could fight against the spirit. <laughs> Goes a little something like this. I bind you. You were talking about binding and rebuke, <laughs> and I bind you, spirit of oppression. I bind you, spirit of oppression, in my mm -hmm. business. That was one of the prayers. I bind you mm -hmm. in my, I bind you, spirit of oppression, in my health. And 
after I had been binding the spirit of oppression, because this spirit tried to overtake me, my health, my business, my family, everything. Don't you know that you were the first message to come along for this new year? You were the first opportunity. So when I saw your message via Facebook Messenger <laughs> and the title of this summit that had everything that I had been through in that title <laughs> and I how I knew that God wanted me to share and, and, and wanted to use it to help people, to equip people to spiritually fight and to turn it into purpose, I knew that that was an opportunity from God. So, but had you not did what you were supposed to do, had you taken that other opportunity, had you taken another mm -hmm. lane, I, I wouldn't have gotten that message. I wouldn't have gotten that message. Right. So thank you, my sister. You're welcome. And, and thank and you for see, saying I yes. wouldn't be at the retreat. Oh, of course. It was God. It was straight from mm -hmm. God. It was him. It was all him. So thank you, God. You're welcome. And it's so funny because he started to show me more of your posts on social. And when I saw it, I was like, look at that. Like that's who, because I was praying to say, Lord, please show me and bring me the speakers who you want me to have on a summit. And then wow. I was just like, okay. Wow. And speaking of posts, there's there are two things. There's something when you say he should. Okay. So before let me write this down for I won't forget. When we were introduced, that's I I I knew of you, but no, when we were introduced, I started paying attention. I went and looked up your your <laughs> like what you were all about. And I was like, wow, she is the bomb. She's amazing. And that's when I saw that you had the mental health piece. I was like, wow. And that was before my incident. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you should say God started showing you my posts. Clean up your posts, people. Mm -hmm. Clean up your posts. We need to do this. We need to Google ourselves and see what comes up. There was someone that I wanted to refer to you badly. And I would never have thought that a certain event was associated with them. Until I, 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 I didn't even need to Google this person. I, I, I know this person, but there was an event that they did and it was what? <laughs> the name alone was just awful. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't refer them to the single mom faith summit setbacks, mm -hmm. trials and <laughs> right. And so they missed out. Mm -hmm. So be careful who you partner with. That's a whole nother session right there. Be so, careful who you collaborate with. And it doesn't mean that this person is a bad, this person is not a bad person, but I knew that I, I didn't want to set you up like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, to, yeah, I didn't want to yeah. bring that in to this. I didn't want to bring that into the, and it's not to say that this person would not have added value, mm -hmm. um, that the, that the women would not have been helped through this person, but please clean up your posts, clean up your posts, mm -hmm. Google yourself, see what comes up, get it all together. And then don't just hide it. Just, just be all in with God. Just be all in mm -hmm. with God because we want the right opportunities to come to us. We want God to smile. I saw this post, would Jesus follow you? <laughs> would Jesus follow you? Oh, that was so good. <laughs> would Jesus follow you? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think we could go a step further. Would Jesus friend you? <laughs> would he want to be your friend? <laughs> oh, what do you mean like? But the good thing is with Jesus, Jesus befriended the tax collectors and ended up inviting one of us sure to be did. his disciples. So there is redemption he in sure him. The, but you know what's interesting? Then, the one Jesus was just thank like you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. The one that he was so just yes, like, mm -hmm, Jesus would want to be your friend. Right. 
Right. So let's right. just keep this at will he follow you. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he would want to be your friend. He would want to be. He is our friend. He is our friend. So clean it up, sisters. Clean it up. Yep. Yeah, you have to because you can miss opportunities. Like I remember um, I had a client of mine and I was doing some work for her and yeah. I needed to source some stuff for her. And um, I heard really great things about this one particular product. And then I went to, because I just knew, I know my client, I was kind of like, okay, I know what type of, you know, what what type of space she occupies and what, you know, she will want to have, even if the product is good, kind of right. like, almost like the energy behind it. Um, and I don't like using the word energy now yeah. because it's kind of been, the word has been kind of co-opted. Um, did you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, I know. And so I, I looked know. and I was just kind of like, let me, let me see something else. Like, let me just do a little bit more digging. And I came across the founder's page and I was like, That's and I was <laughs> doing a meme. <laughs> right. I was like, what? <laughs> what is this? And so I told her, I'm like, I've seen some really good things about this particular thing, but let me tell you the person behind the brand. Mm -hmm. Person might be a very good person, but what was represented mm -hmm. on that, on the, the timeline was kind of wild. And so um, I was just like, look, you know, if you want, we can move forward with this. I've heard great things and great reviews about this, but let me know. Let me know what you want. And she was just like, it's like, that's not in alignment with her. Yeah. That's the, that's the perfect word. Mm -hmm. In alignment. Yeah. yeah. So we could go on <laughs> like you guys see like why it was so funny. Like just to give you some background. After, it was after Kenya's session, like I had um, messaged her. It was just like, this is so good. This is so good. Like, I can't. I, I'm so excited. And I was just like, I just, I just, mm -hmm. I, she was like, well, what's next? I was like, I don't know. But like, I just feel like we just need to get on Facebook Live and put on a long script and just do an afterglow or something. She was just like, well, that's what's next. I was like, Let's do it then. Let's do it. <laughs> and so and so it was just amazing just to have her just be all and in on this. And um here we are. We just Aww. really wanted to serve you all and just and we wanted to give you a chance to be able to ask questions if you have questions. It just you know, we were just gonna converse okay. like we really didn't even know what we were gonna talk about, but we just knew that the Holy Spirit would give us the words to say when it was time. So thank you so much for your yes, yes. to the summit to the Facebook Live and for the retreat. Like when I, I was just like, I don't have any details for you. All I know is that September the 15th to the 17th in Cleveland, Holy Spirit told me to invite you. <laughs> and when I know more, <laughs> I will let you know. And so the fact <laughs> that you said yes to it. So ladies, um, I put two Absolutely. links on here. September the 15th through the 17th, Cleveland, Ohio. That's the link to register for the retreat. Um, and then if you want to join my mm -hmm. live stream, we're all single moms, so everybody cannot travel. Um, so we have a live stream option as well. If you want to join for, be a live stream, know that these are the early bird pricing. This is the early bird pricing right now, just because this is in the beginning stages. And um, once I know more about the planning, um, I will reveal it, but once that happens, the price is going to go up. And so right now, there's a five-month payment plan along with the early bird pricing. So definitely take advantage of it. It's only going to be good for about 30 days or so. So sometime mid-May or so, it's going to go up. So right now, I think you're going to save about $500 on the retreat. And I think about almost was it um, about $250, $300 on the live stream. So it's definitely um, a huge savings along with the fact that you can fit it in your budget on a five-month payment plan. So I definitely encourage you to reserve your space for that. Also, um, if you have not gotten your access, all access pass, make sure you grab your all access pass so you can listen to these uh, messages. And one of the things that I said in the recap email is pick one that resonated with you the most. Listen to that one for 30 days. Take notes on it. Pray. Ask God to reveal how you are to use this in your life. And then after the 30 days is up, pick another yeah. one. But just continue to study these messages. The Lord will tell you which ones you need to spend time on in order, right? And he will reveal that to you. 
And that way you can start working on everything so you don't have to wait until September to begin your transformation because you can start on it now. The springboard, all I know is that the Lord has revealed that to me uh, for what's next. What's in between there? Yeah. Only God knows right now. <laughs> Only God knows yeah. right now. And yeah, so I'm just yeah. Like being guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, in terms of what he's told me to do, because I've Amen. been through it where I've gotten ahead of God, um, and it didn't turn out yeah. the way he would have intended it, where the way it could have. And so I'm being very intentional with this to not make the same mistakes of the past, but to truly be guided by the Holy Spirit. So you all know what I know right now with the retreat, September the 15th to the 17th, either in person or live stream. And somebody do me a favor and click the link to so let me know if I remember them correctly and let me know um, if I need to look these up and if I made a mistake. So hopefully I didn't. Um, but yeah, that's what I have uh, right now and more to come. Stay tuned. Make sure you're staying connected to the Phenomenal Moms group. Invite your friends to be a part of this group too. Uh, make sure you're a part, yeah, just a part of the community and, and what we're building. I have no idea what we're building. It was so funny. Somebody from church asked me, you were like, so so, or do you have a, a, a what? I was just like, I don't know. All I know is that God told me to do this and I'm just listening. I'm just following his steps. That's that's what I know. <laughs> yeah. That's what I know. Yeah. But yeah, you guys yeah. will know as I know. Um and so Kenya, do you have anything you want to leave with the ladies before we sign off? Hmm. I would say I, I, I guess I would just go back to Proverbs three, five and six. Mm -hmm. Just trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him. He is he's God. Believe him. Believe what he says about you. That's what I want to leave the leave um, leave with the ladies. Believe what God says about you. So your homework is to go through scriptures, even if you have to Google <laughs> God's promises. What does God say about me? Um, more than a conqueror, you know. He will supply all of your needs, all of those things, daughter, beloved. What does God say about you? And believe it. Right. Because if you don't, you, you won't move. You won't move. Perfect. That's at the core. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And so before we sign off, I want to pray for Nicole. Um, I saw that her mom. Um, yeah. So um, we'll pray for her right before we sign off. But um, okay. before we do that, can you, how can the ladies get in contact with you? Oh, um, you can contact me. Uh, you can email me uh, info at singlemamawithnodrama.com. It's uh, the word single and then M-A-M-A -A with no drama .com. Um Turns out I have a wonderful uh, CD download waiting for you. It's a free CD download on the self-sabotaging behaviors even confident women must avoid. So go to my website, uh, singlemamawithnodrama.com. And, uh, and get that free CD download. It will bless your life. Um, gotten wonderful um, uh, uh, comments and, and, and testimonies off of that uh, CD download. So that's how you can reach me. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to send that uh, CD download out to you today. And of course, I'm on social, Single Mama With No Drama on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. And you can also friend me. You've got my... Uh, my name uh, in this live and uh, yeah that's how you can find me I'd love to hear from you yes thank you thank you thank you and so ladies I'm gonna have thank you so much for joining uh, Kenya this has been amazing thank you for having <laughs> oh, me. I you're welcome. You're welcome. Really I'm looking was. at the comments they're amazing <laughs> and so thank you so much ladies oh, you can connect with me <laughs> oh you can't see the comments um she gave me a I free can't. cd for the first time okay. i'll go back and look at, at the t-shirt table yes i love it and so what say that one more time <laughs> uh nicole says she gave you gave her a cd the first time you met she met you a, at your t-shirt table yes, yes yes hey nicole <laughs> i think it was yes. oklahoma right we met in oklahoma right nicole i think it was oklahoma 
Yeah, and Shara says, thank you for today's words. They have truly inspired and uplifted her yet again. She appreciates us. You, thank you. Thank you for oh, tuning you in. Thank you for God. tuning in. And so, ladies, uh, make sure you check out those links to join us at the retreat. Um, they're in the comments. So September the 15th through the 17th, um, either live or on live stream, uh, live in person or on live stream. We'd love to see you there. We're really going to be taking the stuff that we talked about in the face of it and activating it and turning it into your own personal plan to purpose and so we're going to be doing that there um, in the in the retreat it's going to be amazing make sure you take advantage of the five-month payment plan and the early bird pricing and also grab your copy of the all access replay and you can connect with me here in the phenomenal moms group on instagram over at fn phenomenal or also on my idea to income.com Let's definitely stay connected. And like I said, when I know more, you guys will know more. So welcome to the journey and thank you for being a part of it. And so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here today. And so 